Mm. All right, so I took the plunge a few weeks ago and I decided to run iPad OS on my new M4 iPad Pro. And there's a lot to talk about in this video, but I will say this. A lot of you guys may not agree with my take, but personally, after having used iPad OS 18, I feel like this is a step in the right direction for the iPad as a whole. I know that's a controversial take. Many of you guys were not amused with the minimal changes to iPad OS 18, but I feel like come this fall with Apple intelligence, all of that is about to change. So allow me to break down my thoughts in this video. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. How's it going everyone? My name is RJ and we're back at it again with another iPad Pro video. I cannot emphasize how much I love this device. This is my primary workhorse. I use this iPad every single day for many different tasks. The only thing that I don't use my iPad for is editing these videos. But pretty much everything else is done on my iPad. I will never leave my house without this thing. The portability is just crazy. But before we do continue, if you guys find this video informative, then do me a huge favor and drop a like on this video. It helps me out more than you guys know and while you're at it, subscribe for a lot more iPad content. Content. It's going to be a crazy year with Tech Timber and Tech Tober right around the corner, so follow along. Personally, I love this year's form factor. The M4 iPad Pro is thinner, it's lighter, and the Magic Keyboard has improved tremendously. There is a lot to love this year. But iPad OS, as we all know, can be pretty limiting in the things that we can do on an iPad. And don't get me wrong, that's by design. But slowly but surely, we're seeing hints that the iPad Pro is headed in the right direction. Let me explain. Let's start off by talking about all the improvements to iPad OS 18. And then towards the end of the video, we'll discuss some features and changes that would have been nice to have but ultimately we didn't get. Okay, so on iPad OS 18, we can now edit the home screen and I've been loving this more than I should. Customizing my iPad home screen for some reason is so much more fun than customizing my iPhone home screen. I've been playing around with some of these wallpapers that I made, link is in the description by the way, and just trying to mix and match these app icons. Darkening these apps, tinting these apps, resizing these widgets, all while being able to place these apps anywhere I want. It truly makes my iPad feel like my own, with my own personal unique vibes. A great update to the iPad in my opinion. A lot of you guys have been asking for this and Apple finally gave it to us. On iPad OS 18, we can now lock and hide apps. The only way that you can open these apps is by using Face ID. I mean, technically you can abuse this feature and use this feature for hiding things from your significant other, but I feel like when used properly, it's very useful, especially in a scenario where your iPad gets stolen while it is unlocked. Locking and hiding these apps now give you an extra layer of security. We've had this on Android tablets for quite some time now, and it's finally nice to see it coming to the iPad. There's also a new password app now that has a lot of these passwords companies in complete panic mode. We've seen this before. Apple will introduce a new feature or an app that completely kills off a company. I can see all of my passwords here within this app. It's accessible with Face ID, a great way to store and remember all your passwords. The control center now is also completely revamped on the iPad. There also seems to be a new kill switch, great for turning off your iPad quickly. You can add multiple pages to the control center now. You can rearrange these icons. And over the past three weeks, I've been finding myself using the control center a lot more to navigate my iPad. And then of course, arguably the big biggest change to iPad OS 18 was the introduction of a calculator app. You can argue about this app all you want, but for the most part, everyone's been going crazy about it and deservedly so. The calculator app actually uses Apple intelligence to solve math equations for you in real time. And as you change the equation, the answer also changes, well, in real time. This is not only impressive, but would have been really useful for me back when I was taking advanced calculus in first year uni. It took Apple a very long time to give us a calculator on the iPad, and I feel like they delivered. Say what you want, but this is true truly impressive. You can also now convert currency within the calculator app. A lot of my YouTube transactions are in USD and I do live in Canada, so with a weak Canadian dollar, this is a very useful feature for me. I find myself using this almost every single day. Hints of Apple intelligence can also be now found within the notes app. You can simply write whatever math equation you want and here it'll do the calculations for you. This is going to be a game changer for students. There's also a new transcription feature, which I haven't been able to get to work properly. After all, this is a beta, but when it works, it's been impressive. It's a super useful tool for recording lectures in class or even recording meetings. And the thing is the iPad will transcribe the meetings and lectures for you in real time with amazing accuracy. Now, admittedly, I don't have the prettiest handwriting in the world, but with iPad OS 18, at least my handwriting will now be legible. We see Apple intelligence here at work once again. Every letter I write is cleaned up for me. But what's impressive about this is, is the fact that Apple intelligence is able to fix my handwriting without completely changing up my writing style. Like this still looks like I wrote it, but only it looks a lot cleaner now. That's actually super impressive. Here's something that's actually worth debating. Using a screen protector on an iPad is a must. These are expensive tablets and you don't want to risk your iPad's display getting scratched up. Even a micro scratch can ruin your day. I know it's ruined mine. Here's where paper light comes in. A screen protector with a twist. 
Paperlike is legit and I'm not just saying this because they're a sponsor of today's video. I've been using Paperlike well before I started this YouTube channel. So to work with a brand that I fully believe in is an incredible opportunity for this channel. For those of you that don't know, Paperlike is a screen protector with a matte like finish that reduces glare from light and legitimately feels like you're writing on real paper. I feel like with the introduction of iPadOS 18, you're going to be writing a whole lot more now on your iPad. Tiny microbeads called nanodots have been engineered to add resistance and improve haptic feedback when using the Apple Pencil on your iPad. This in turn emulates the feeling of writing on real paper. I wasn't a believer till I actually started using Paperlike on the daily and now I don't think I can ever go back to an iPad without Paperlike. This is the crazy part. You can even hear the difference in pen strokes with an iPad that uses Paperlike versus an iPad that's not using Paperlike. Take a quick listen for yourself. Every purchase comes with two screen protectors, the installation process is super simple, and if installed properly, you will not be able to see a single bubble. So if you are in search of a screen protector, I suggest spending that extra money and purchasing a screen protector from a brand that you can actually trust, like Paperlike. If you want to learn more, there's a link for you guys in the description below, and thanks to Paperlike for sponsoring this video. So far, this update is looking pretty decent, right? Well, the thing is, there is a lot that we still don't get on iPad OS 18 that a lot of us have asked for. There are so many common complaints regarding app functionality on the iPad Pro. One major issue is with the Files app, which I find to be slow and unreliable. Basic operations like copying, moving, and deleting files can often get stuck or just fail, especially with larger files or those on external drives. The app's integration with the iCloud drive is also problematic, with folders frequently failing to open instantly and the aggressive purging of downloaded copies, sometimes making files unavailable offline. Another issue that I've encountered is for some reason we still can't set default apps for opening specific files. Like this one honestly makes no sense to me. Like it could be an easy fix but Apple refuses to do it for some reason. Multitasking on the iPad Pro also falls short of expectations. Despite the powerful hardware, iPad OS does not support the same level of multitasking as Mac. OS. The stage manager feature intended to enhance multitasking, but it's often seen as clunky and unintuitive, making it difficult to manage multiple apps simultaneously. And for creative professionals like myself, apps like Affinity Photo and Pixelmator offer powerful features, but can be overwhelming and require quite a steep learning curve. And even apps like Final Cut Pro are also limited with touch-based editing. It often feels less precise and more cumbersome compared to the traditional mouse and keyboard setups. Overall, I feel like professional apps can be a lot better on the iPad Pro, but we've yet to see that. What these issues really highlight is that while the iPad Pro's hardware is top-notch, its software still has significant room for improvement to fully meet the expectations of users seeking a seamless and efficient workflow like myself. We're still missing cool AI features like Circle to Search. Hopefully that does come later down the line in an update. But even if we never get these changes, the truth of the matter is Apple intelligence will ultimately change the way we use and interact with their iPads. Apple intelligence and AI enhancements should make the iPad Pro a much more viable primary work device. And here's the best part. You don't have to buy the latest and greatest iPad to experience all of these changes. You can go out right now and buy a 2018 M1 iPad Pro on a serious discount and still benefit from all of these Apple intelligence changes. Unlike with the iPhone, where only the iPhone 15 Pro and up will be getting the Apple intelligence update, which honestly really sucks for iPhone 14 or even an iPhone 15 user. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about these changes coming to the iPad. Let's get a dialogue going down in the comments below. I know many of you guys were disappointed with this update, but I personally feel like it's a step in the right direction. So let me know what changes you guys would have liked to see that are missing. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you guys made it to the end of this video, drop a dolphin emoji down in the comments below. I would love to know who my true supporters are. Don't forget to check out today's sponsor or paper like this is a legit screen protector that actually changes the way you interact with your iPad. Only a handful of accessories out there can actually do that and paper like is definitely one of them. And of course don't forget to flex with your paper thin tech. I mean seriously this iPad is very very thin.